Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and this time I've got a full tank review for you on the LTTB, the Tier 7 Soviet light tank. The LTTB is one of the fastest vehicles in World of Tanks, and it has enough armor to be able to take a hit occasionally from higher tiered vehicles. With an 85mm with a devastating rate of fire that, if underestimated, can leave its opponents as smoking wrecks. If that all sounds like your cup of tea, then hang around, I've got some Ace Tank gameplay coming right up, and if you have no interest in purchasing this Tier 7 Soviet light tank, then I'll tell you its weaknesses and how to outplay them on the battlefield. So let's see how the LTTB stacks up when its statistics are compared to its Tier 7 light tank rivals, the M41 Walker Bulldog, the WZ-131, and the Speerpanzer SP-1. And for clarification, both the M41 Walker Bulldog and the Speerpanzer are going to be using their autoloaders, and I've equipped the WZ-131 with the 85mm, the same calibre gun that you use on the Tier 7 Soviet light tank. So DPM-wise, that is damage per minute. The LTTP is only slightly better than the M41 Walker Bulldog, worse than the WZ-131, but way, way, way better than the Speerpanzer. The tank has lower penetration than the Walker Bulldog and the Speerpanzer, but better penetration than the WZ-131 at 170 millimeters. The LTTB has 180 alpha damage, which is slightly lower than the 85 millimeter on the WZ-131 and way worse than that 90 millimeter that's on the Speerpanzer. But at least it does hit slightly harder than the M41 Walker Bulldog. One thing that's nice about the LTTB, at least compared to the Speerpanzer, is that its shell velocity is just so much higher. 630 meters a second with the Speerpanzer, that's really not very good at all. And it also does better than the 85 millimeter on the WZ-131, but not quite as good as the M41 Walker Bulldog. I do like a high shell velocity, it gives your opponents less chance to change their movements, especially at long range. One thing I really don't like about the LTTB, however, is that it doesn't carry that much ammunition, only 42 rounds with 180 alpha damage, way less than the WZ-131, which carries 47 with 200 alpha damage. Which means that this tank is very hard pressed to do above maybe 5,000 damage unless you're very accurate with your rounds. So if it's looking like the battle is going to be very long-winded, don't waste them. The aim time on the tank is better than the 131 and the Speerpanzer, but worse than the Walker Bulldog with its autoloader, and its accuracy is joint best along with the WZ-131, but it has the worst gun handling along with the Speerpanzer at 0.16, but slightly better gun handling than the Speerpanzer when it is only turning its turret and not moving the tank. But now I must highlight the most depressing aspect of the LTTB, and that is the amount that it can depress its gun. It is only 3 degrees way worse than all of the other tanks, and even worse than the terrible 5 degrees of gun depression that WZ-131 gets. This means that the LTTB is only going to be able to spot over ridge lines and never be able to engage its opponents and be able to pull back easily without exposing a large amount of its armor. Thankfully, however, the tank is the second fastest in this comparison, 68 kilometers an hour. This thing is lightning fast when you look at its power to weight ratio, over 31. And its ground resistances aren't that much worse than the Speerpanzer. It really does make the German Tier 7 light tank look like a big fat slug. And this can certainly be one of the most fun and rewarding things when you're playing the LTTB, the fact that you can just bomb it around like a crazy Soviet madman. And now on to the other great aspect of the LTTB, it gets a surprisingly great amount of armor. Look at this, 90 millimeters at the front of the hull and the turret, 45 at the side and 75 at the side of the turret and 40 at the rear of the hull and 52 on the rear of the turret. Just to put that into perspective, the rear hull armor of the LTTB is way better than even the front of any of the other vehicles. And the back of the LTTB's turret is thicker than all of the other tanks as well, although you've got to take into account the curvature of the WZ-131. This means that when you're shooting at this tier 7 Soviet light tank that you actually have to bother to aim if you're quite a low tier vehicle. If for some reason you're shooting up at an LTTB on the ridge line, we can see that its effective armor goes to 200 millimeters on the front plate. And if it exaggerates the angle even further, this is going to auto ricochet any round in the game. This means that when an LTTB is wiggling his way towards you, that he has about 170 millimeters of effective armor on the front hull. And that means that a Walker Bulldog is a 50-50 whether it's going to go through if it hits this part of the armor. And don't try and whiff your shots in towards the turret because as we can see it ranges between 120 millimeters all the way up to about 200 millimeters of effective armor given the spacing. 
And so if you're in a tier 6 or tier 7 tank, don't underestimate the armour of this vehicle, it's pretty much as good as most tier 8 medium tanks. Unfortunately the vehicle only gets 390 meters view range, not quite as good as the 400 staple that you would really want on a higher tiered light tank. And I think that about covers it, although we should make a quick mention towards the track traverse of this tank, which is 48 degrees. That's not quite as good as the 56 degrees of tank traverse on the Walker Bulldog or the 54 degrees on the WZ-131, but it's still good enough to make quick rapid evasive maneuvers. And now for something completely new, a lot of you have been requesting that I give recommendations for skills and for equipment in my tank reviews. So firstly I recommend you take camouflage on all of your crew, as all light tanks get the same amount of camouflage when they're moving as when they're stationary, it's the specialty of the class. Next when your commander reaches 100% I recommend you retrain and take 6 cents, this is the most important skill in the game as of now. Next you want to take snapshot on your gunner, clutch braking in my opinion on your driver as the traverse speed of the tank isn't exactly amazing compared to the other light tanks, and situational awareness on your loader to try and boost up that 390 base meters view range on this vehicle. And when you've reached three skills, just add in brothers in arms on every single one of your crew members as well. But remember, it is a perk and useless until they all have it at 100%. When it comes to equipment, unfortunately, the LTTB cannot use vertical stabilizers, which makes it worse at firing on the move, which makes it even more straightforward as to what equipment you should use. You need to use a medium caliber tank gun rammer to get that extra 10% rate of fire, coated optics to increase your view range by 10%, and for the third slot I recommend using improved ventilation. But anyway I think that's quite enough theory crafting, let's see how the LTTB holds up in some gameplay. And so here we go, we're playing on Fisherman's Bay, not the best matchup for us, there are tier 10 tanks on the enemy team including one tier 10 self propelled gun, but then again I don't really care about these kind of bad matchups for light tanks because unlike a medium or a heavy, it doesn't really matter how high the, the tier the tanks are against you. I guess in the LTTB it kind of does because it negates the advantage of you having that hull armor when you're top tier playing against only tier 8 tanks and below. And that's right, yeah, top tier, tier 8, that's because light tanks get matched as if they were one tier higher. So this vehicle gets kind of tier 8 medium tank matchmaking, so watch out for that with your high tier light tanks. It can catch a lot of people by surprise. But, so what I'm trying to say is that when the LTTB is top tier in like a tier 8 game, you can be a little bit more aggressive and use that 90 millimeters of well-angled frontal armor, but when you're in a game like this where there are tier 9 and tier 10 tanks shooting at you, you can't be so reliant on your armor and you have to play a supporting role, a pure scouting role. But there are other benefits to being in a matchup like this. Remember that when you're shooting at tanks that are two tiers higher than you, or in some of these cases three tiers higher than you, that just means a huge amount of experience to be gained. So we got a Spearpanzer here. We've put one round in an LTTB, and we put another one there into the Speerpanzer, the RU-251 in fact, not the tier 7 that we were talking about when we were doing the, the statistics comparison. So I'm just trying to work these bushes, I'm using my sixth sense to know when I've been spotted, and trying to extend view range for my team all the way across the map. Ignore this dynamic system here, this, this line, my view range would have been out towards the, the spotting ring, which is 445 meters, that's just a replay bug. There's almost no point in me shooting at that ST1 there, all that's going to do is get myself spotted, and his armor is very, very thick. As we highlighted, 170 millimeters of penetration on this 85 millimeter gun, that is not enough to contest most vehicles on the enemy team frontally in this kind of a matchup. And you don't get that much better when you load the premium rounds, it only goes up to 216. There we can see the side of the VK4502B turret, easily able to ricochet our low caliber round there. Now we're going to load an APCR round and possibly get a shot into his side. In retrospect, I'm not sure if firing there was the correct thing to do, but shooting at his side armor here, there was a chance that was going to go in, but you could see that he was actually traversing his tank, which overangled his well it, it made the angling on his the side of his vehicle much higher and so we ricochet off there what is the Spearpanzer doing it looks like he was going to come straight at us but luckily he isn't you can see that with the LTTB a ridge line like this is almost perfect for hiding your tank why is that because it's basically flat and then a little bit of a dip uh, well a little bit of a ridge I should say because so that means that even though this tank only has three degrees of gun depression it can use a position like this very very well if I was trying to work on a ridge line more like this, I wouldn't be able to depress my gun until I went all the way up over the ridge, and that's something that you need to watch out for in this tank. 
And when you're playing against LTTBs, if you can force them over a ridge line, you can make their shots so accurate, um, well, so awkward, I should say, and not accurate, is what I was trying to indicate. And so, like, this is the kind of perfect fighting ground to, to lure an LTTB in. We can see just unable to depress the gun over the smallest of angles. The tank, with three degrees, does feel exceedingly awkward. And whenever I play this tank in these kind of positions, you see me just trying to find a position which I can get a shot off into an opposite LTTB. So we put our first round into him, 195 damage done there. I don't want to get hit by that BL-10 gun on that tier 9 Soviet tank destroyer. The Object 704 will rip apart my tank. I think if he rolls extra high, he can actually one-shot me, but that's very unlikely. So the LTTP is going after the artillery, and I decide to come over and see if I can save the artillery. The LTTP decides to shoot me and stop shooting at the artillery, so it looks like I'm doing a good job in saving him. I'm just auto-aiming at him and wondering why he's shooting at me and not the artillery now, but this is going quite well. Oh, darn it, the Object 704 decides to finish off the artillery, but we win our duel against the LTTP, putting six rounds into him doing 950 damage and only taking three rounds in reply. Great result there. And we also managed to put a very lucky shot on the move into that Object 704. I have no idea how that one penetrated. I didn't look to see if I was loading an APCR round. I think I was using a standard AP round. And if that was the case, I was blooming lucky to get through that Tier 9 Soviet tank destroyer's armor frontally. It's very, very good. Well, at least it's angled and about 120 millimeters thick, I think. But, here we go. Here's the rear of his armor isn't so good. I keep an eye on the ST1 to see what the ST1 is going to do, because I don't want him to come after me. And because I do that, I actually manage to bounce a shot off the back of the Object 704. Now I start to try and work his tracks. Gotta take the tracks off. Don't turn round, don't turn round. Yes! Detract him. Doesn't look like he's got a repair kit. Hold him in place for the 5120 to finish him off. And now I can use the mobility of the LTTB to try and get behind another Soviet Tier 9 tank, this time the heavy variety, the ST-1. From here, you actually have to be quite careful shooting at the back of the ST-1. Look at this, I bounced two rounds off the back of the tank, bouncing off this mid plate here. I want to be shooting the upper or the lower of the back plate, as that is where you will penetrate and take him out. Always nice to be killing tanks that are two tiers higher than you, it's, it's a great feeling. I just love my light tanks, some of my favorite vehicles in the game. I think they're just absolutely awesome high tier light tanks. And I don't know why, but my games in the LTTB have just been so ridiculously successful. I, I must be getting insanely lucky in this tank, I think. But then again, maybe it's a tank that matches that kind of brawling, aggressive play style. And if you, if you play like that a lot like me, then maybe this will go well for you. So I immediately noticed that I've been spotted by the Conqueror take some evasive maneuvers, do a little bit of a wiggle, and it looks like it was a good thing that I was wiggling there at the end as the Conqueror fluffs his shot. Great result there. Do you see just how quick the LTTB was able to shift? I'd like to clarify, this is actually the 9.13 patch, so I wasn't using the, the handbrake, or I guess you should call it locking the tracks, right, to pull off that evasive maneuver. That's just how good the traverse speed is on the LTTB. We're with the track traverse, or the hull traverse, combined with the, the fairly good ground resistance as this tank gets. It is highly mobile. So we put a round into the Conqueror there, 198 damage. and But he manages to finish off an IS-3 on our team, so I'm not too happy about that. And this game is neck and neck right now. Both, all of the tier 10 tanks are still alive. It really is as close as it can get. And I think we just saw some lightning over there. Haven't seen that for a while. So thankfully, the Gwei 100 on our team finishes off that Conqueror. Didn't expect him to hit that. He hadn't been spotted for a while. Looks like the Conqueror stayed put. And the Tier 10 self-propelled gun punishes him. So right now, I'm just wondering where the hell these artillery are. Come on, where are you? Where are you? Oh my god, there he is. There's an M4043. I put one shot to try and track him. He pulls back just as I fire. He must have sixth sense, and now he spots me. Now I auto-aim at him, and I turn my tank, but it doesn't look like my turret traverse was able to keep up with my track traverse. Luckily, it's far more important to get out of the way of that big, fat, derpy gun, and now I use his wreck to try and hide from the Object 261. I thought that the Object 261 might be targeting me, and so I hide behind him, and now I pull out when I think that I'm no longer spotted. Remember, if a high explosive round hits a dead tank, it is completely absorbed. It doesn't matter, it's not going to splash through the dead tank, it's just one of the, the, the mechanics in the game that you can use to avoid enemy artillery. It's very useful to use the wrecks of your enemies against them. That's always a satisfying feeling. 
So I guess right now I could go and try and spot the Object 261, but I was far more concerned about trying to spot tanks that are going to be pouring into our cap circle to allow the WT Alpha 100 and the 5120 to finish him off. Luckily for me, however, they were a little slow on the draw and I managed to finish off the Carnarvon. And now I think I get a glimpse on this IS-7. Of course, when you've got a German tank destroyer with pretty darn good view range next to you, you're unsure when you're watching a replay whether you were the one who was spotting. When you're actually playing the game, you get the ribbon pop-ups and so you get that kind of satisfaction. You know what, I absolutely love those ribbon pop-ups when I'm playing my light tanks. It's so rewarding for somebody who actually cares about doing spotting damage and helping their team rather than trying to ped their W and 8 and, and just focus on doing damage and kills, right? Ah, it's nice to play like a pure scout. I think the ribbons are pretty cool. Alright, so now we're hunting down a Panther 2 and an Object 261. That Object 261 is worth a lot. Remember you get the initial spotting bonus if I manage to find him, and it looks like I did. There you go, spotting bonus for me, possibly. And now we get to put some shots into a big juicy tier 10 target. This is World of Tanks for a light tank right here, shooting self-propelled guns three tiers higher than you, flushing them out into the open, so I think my team should be able to finish him off. Or will he? Hopefully that WZ-111-14 isn't going to mess it up. Come on, buddy, finish him off. I was looking at him right now going, well, wh why haven't you finished him? Do you want me to come and do it? Okay, I'll come and do it myself then. Okay, well, good, good, he finished it off. And that's the kind of position where locking the tracks would come in handy when you've got to make those sharp 180 degree turns, right? Okay, so right now, the end of the game, Panther 2, 80% hit points, that looks like a very juicy target, but you can start to see what I was talking about, about this tank running out of ammunition. Well, I guess I have 16 rounds left and I've done 3,000 damage, so... But I have been quite accurate with my shells this game, I haven't been bouncing them or just whiffing them away. Unfortunately, however, you're going to see just how balanced a WT Alpha 100 is. Comes over, kills the IS-7, turns his tank to the right, and kills the Panther 2 as well. Well, that's fun. That's really fun for me. Played a real calculated, calm game the whole time. Still had some hit points to hopefully play around with at the end. And then that German tank destroyer just comes in and goes, mine. Nevertheless, this was a great game for the LTTB, which had all of the characteristics that you will have to excel in if you want to master this tier 7 Soviet light tank. We really did it all. We used bushes to be able to extend our view range out for our team counter enemy light tanks, and then pull back to be able to defend our artillery. Well, at least we tried to. Won the one-on-one -on -one engagement with the enemy light tank, and then proceeded to support some kills on some higher tiered Soviet vehicles. Eventually advancing in front of my team to be able to provide view range to get important tanks killed like the Conqueror, the artillery, and then use the momentum of the tank to be able to get back quickly, defend the cap circle, or at least spot the tanks that might have been trying to take it for my team, and then be in position to at least try and pressure the IS-7 and allow the Waffenträger Alpha E100 to finish this off. Anyway, let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats. So this was my first ace tanker in the LTTB, 4,924 experience for our double, that is 1,641 base experience points. We finished third on damage in this tier 10 game, but also managed to do 2,262 spotting damage and 44 D tracking. And I was very happy that we didn't even need to fire that many APCR rounds in this game, giving us 43,000 credits profit. And the only thing that would have made this a more complete replay for the LTTB is if I could have got to show you what the frontal armor of the tank was like. But again, as I highlighted during the gameplay, this 90 millimeters of well-angled armor goes up to about 175 millimeters of effective armor. And that's really not going to work again any tanks that aren't about tier 6 or tier 7, possibly some tier 8 tanks. And mostly the armor on this tank is just very useful for not getting one shot by high explosive rounds or when you're trying to pressure enemy scout tanks or very low tier medium tanks. But nevertheless, it's certainly a huge positive for the tier 7 Soviet light tank. So all in all, my impressions of the LTTP are that it's an excellent vehicle as long as you can get over the three degrees of gun depression that the tank has. And it's the only way to get to the T-54 lightweight, which is a fantastic vehicle for playing in your strongholds. And if you were so inclined, this could be a way to then get onto the T-54, and then you can have both the T-62A and the Object 140. And as you will have seen in my Tier 9 Top Tanks video, the T-54 has to be one of the best vehicles tier for tier in the game. There is of course only one problem with taking this route, and that is that you have to go through the MT-25, which for many people is a very painful experience. And so games like these have enabled me to get some of the most respectable stats that I have ever been able to get in World of Tanks, at least for my first 30 games. 
games. And this well-rounded Tier 7 Soviet light tank certainly has been one of the biggest barrels of fun that I've played with recently, and will certainly suit the aggressive scout who wants to have just a little bit of armor to fall back on occasionally. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tank review. If you did, or maybe it was just useful to you, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if this video has sparked your interest in the Tier 7 Soviet light tank, then simply click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen to see a plethora of other LTTB replays. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the LTTB, especially how it holds up compared to all of the other Tier 7 light tanks. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.